Unfiltered Gamer, and we got these three wonderful people here to talk to you, answer any questions you may have. I'll start off with that, asking some questions regarding what they do and all that good stuff. And if you guys have anything you want to say or uh, discuss, then it will be open to the floor. So uh, I do board game reviews, live streams, and all that good stuff on Facebook and whatnot. And I've been doing about three years. I worked in the film industry first. I did movies like Sharknado and other terrible asylum films. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Okay, I did. But uh, they're, they're, they're fun, though, right? Uh, I got to play in Little Dead Robin Hood, which is on Netflix. Please don't watch that movie. It is embarrassing, and I do not want, I don't want people to see me turning into a werewolf. It's not, it's not pleasant. The, the graphic effects were not good. Anyway, so that's me. I've been doing board game reviews for about three years now, getting involved in the community, and it's been a lot of fun. People have been really receptive, and generous and helping me out and becoming what I am, which is a small fish in a big pond of wonderful people. Speaking of wonderful people, let's go ahead and just go down the line from left, uh, from right to left, and uh, you guys can introduce yourselves. My name is Jay Duguay. Um, I started out doing marketing for a board game company that was trying to launch a couple years ago. They didn't go anywhere, but I did. Uh, <laughs> um, I just mostly do a lot of networking and connecting people, but I'm getting ready to launch my own social media marketing um, here post Gen Con called Nerdy Mama Media, uh, along with producing a channel for my eight-year-old. So she's going to be doing uh, previews and unboxings of great games for introducing your children to gaming. I'm Josh Hale. I run Meeple Gamers. Um, it's basically a consortium of a bunch of people that do a lot of writing reviews. Uh, we do podcasts, do some live webcast. Um, my professional experience beyond what I'm doing here is I'm actually a darn attorney. Um, and my expertise in that is really depressing, so I do this because it's more fun. You're an attorney with that haircut. You know what? <laughs> uh, awesome. No, uh, my name is Lance Meister. Uh, I'm better known in the board game world as the Undead Viking. Uh, I've been doing videos for 10 years. I've been hosting a podcast on the YouTubes for the last like four or five years. Um, most recently, I work for uh, Tasty Mystical Games. I, as of like a couple weeks ago, I am no longer with them, and I'm kind of just freelancing. So, there you go. All of our wonderful people, I'm pretty sure most of you guys know at least one of us in the room, I hope that's why you're here, unless you have a question regarding that, but I want to actually get to know people individually as to what they started doing before they became board gamer. Now you probably mentioned uh, you were an attorney and all that good stuff, but what got you like involved to start making you want to do this? And was it just gaming in general, or what do you think? You just start first, I suppose. I've just always been like a major social butterfly, so, and I'm just that person who likes to promote other people's stuff. Like, so what game got you in the hobby? What's, what started it? Was it, you know? Uh, very early on was Settlers of Catan, um, and then later on, during my pregnancy, uh, my daughter's dad was a competitive Magic the Gathering player. So, and then it wasn't until short, like, about four years later, uh, my best friend and I, we were going through our separations at the same time, and board gaming was the thing that kind of helped us get through that, and that's when I realized, like, oh, this is an actual, like, legitimate hobby. This isn't just like pulling a game out with your family once in a while. And you think it's when you first start the hobby, you kind of, your friends are like, what is it, chess and checkers and, and Monopoly? Monopoly? Yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's the main thing people say. And it's like, well, actually, there's a lot of new modern games that if you like those games, there's there's stuff like that that is in the industry that's, I'd, I'd say, personally, I enjoy more. But not to diss those, those games are what started this, and what got this growing and such a wonderful thing. Right. I think a lot of us came from those roots, playing Monopoly. So I remember playing with my family Monopoly. It was arguing. It was a lot of arguing. Strangely of enough, fighting. when I was young, my mom managed a game preserve out in California. But she's not a gamer. She just brought home like D and D books and Magic the Gathering cards because she liked the artwork. She'd buy minis just to paint them, but never gamed. So it didn't like strike me until I was older that that's what those were. So it's it's really weird. <laughs> I'm, I'm not an RPG, but I, I, I watch it. It's really fascinating. Go ahead. Me, myself, I, the first game I remember that's kind of in this section of the gaming world is there was a store in Columbus, Ohio at a mall that no, is no longer open that was called uh, Games People Play. And I went in and I found Abalone. And this was when I was in college and I fell in love with it and I got mean with it and I loved it and I liked being mean to other people and them being mean to me. And then I never played again. 
for a long time. And uh, eventually I went through a really gnarly divorce, which is really not personal crap, whatever. Um, but my daughter was young and she was on the phone as a young kid all the time. I said, no, this, this, is, not, this is not flying. I, I don't like this. I don't want her to be one of those kids. And I said, you know, what can I do that's educational, that teaches her things that's also fun? So I started looking and looking and looking and I found modern board games. And I realized that I'd found modern board games a long time ago and just kind of fell off, you know, fell off the train. You'd be surprised how many modern games, that, like, like Cosmic Encounter is an old game actually, right. but it's a, it's a classic game that I would say most people really enjoy. Right. It's dog top tens and it's like you don't realize that those are even there, you know? Exactly. And so eventually I got my daughter playing that and then I ran into Carcassonne and I played Carcassonne and I played Carcassonne and I bought expansions for Carcassonne and I bought more expansions for Carcassonne and I made there expansions for Carcassonne <laughs> and I, I realized just how much I really liked it on top of what I was trying to instill in my daughter and now it's really cool because she's seven years old now and just when uh, Actually, it was with Casey Minstrel, the, uh, the Flow of History. Yeah. One of my buddies taught my seven-year-old right when I came out, the Flow of History. And I'm going, oh, you can't teach her that. And she won. I was, I, I, I gamed all my life, pretty much. Um, my brother instilled in me a love of like Dungeons and Dragons when I was like seven or eight years old. Uh, I always kind of played board games, um, but uh, and I played RPGs mostly. But uh, what happened was is that as we got older, um, all of the, the same guys that I gamed with, like since I was in junior high, uh, we all kind of started getting married and having kids. And uh, my daughter, who's not paying any attention, she's sitting back there right now. She was born, and uh, I didn't have any time to like play uh, Dungeons and Dragons with my buddies anymore. So I was like, I gotta be able to find like a board game to play. And, uh, and so I read about Arkham Horror, and I was just like, oh, this seems like kind of cool. You have a cooperative game. And I, I, the idea of that was just kind of neat, how you all work together to beat the game. And so I had all my friends who had kids who didn't, normally couldn't get together for a whole like Saturday from noon until midnight anymore. And we just, we, you know, sit played Arkham Horror for seven hours trying to figure out the rules. But we, for whatever reason, we just loved it. And then what happened was is that they weren't always available. and. I still wanted to talk about board games. I had the bug, so I was like, "Well, I can. I'll, I'll do reviews. I'll, I'll talk about board games to nobody if I have to." And then, and that's, and that's why I started making reviews. And that was, like I said, about 10, 11 years ago. And I've been doing it ever since. Excellent. So I had nothing was. I was really thinking about this for quite some time. It's this moment when you start realizing this is what you want to do. You want to become a, a board game reviewer, or a media personality, or somebody that works for a company. Um, for me, when I first got into board gaming, a, a, a guy named James Mathy uh, introduced me uh, with a game. He gave me a game, my first game to review. He was just like, yeah, hey kid, you got 20 subscribers? <laughs> here, here you go, and we'll, we'll see what you do with it, right? And it was a blow up, like, oh, that's amazing, you know, because I've been buying games to start with, and I started to realize people were actually willing to, to give me games to see what I had to say with them. And uh, I got that, and that, so I'm, I'm curious what you guys, if you guys had any similar experience, and if not, what what, what did you do? I, mean, I, I already talked to, to you recently where you're like, I just went for it and hit it hard, you know? Um, and also, is there any inspirational people in, in board, gaming, board gaming to you, or somebody that inspires you to keep doing what you're doing? I mean, for me, it's my wife by, by far. She really is my rock when it comes to this stuff, and it, it can get stressful and it can get uh, crazy. I mean, you, you're at Gen Con, and you know, just, just being in the crowd, it's, it's insane. But then somebody who has to work at a booth or do uh, interviews and all that, it, it, it starts tiring you. You think it's not, not so crazy, but it, it can be pretty crazy. So, uh, in, your first moment when people have interacted with you, giving you things, or uh, your inspirational person in gaming. Um, I recently started doing uh, customer service for a publisher as a side thing and as soon as I started they were like, okay, well we have to send you all these games and I was like, so that I knew the parts of them when I was doing the parts orders and I was like, oh, okay. So I, yeah, that was like, that blew me away, like all of a sudden my collection like tripled. Um, since I haven't like, I've had a lot of people approach me asking me if I do reviews. 
I prefer the idea of doing previews over reviews because my opinion only matters if our opinions align generally because you may love a game that I hate and vice versa. So putting my opinion out there doesn't feel necessary. So I haven't gotten to that point where like I've crossed that threshold where I'm like, hey, let me talk about your game in that degree. I think a lot of people in the industry or people, people in the industry have their own viewpoints, right? You see like somebody like Tom Fassel or Z Garcia, and these are three different guys, yeah. drastically different. When you watch their videos, somebody be like, Tom, I don't like what he has to say. So whenever I see a game he says he likes, I don't like it. But when I see Z tell me about a game, then I really dig it. So that's how you kind of go, well, this is, this is how I am. This is the type of games I like. And if you're like me and you like the games I like, you're going to like these games. And, and vice versa. I'm sure there are people that hate watch my videos like, hey, he likes this one? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. This game is not for me. <laughs> and and, that, and that's fair enough, you know? So I think that's something you have to like determine like, what's your, you know, where, where you stand on exactly everything. I don't know. Just, I, I can see what you're saying. I can see what you're yeah. as well, though. I think the the most inspirational person for me, though, is James Hudson. So I met him two Gen Cons ago, and this is when I was still helping my friend just do his social media. So I was tiny fish in a big sea of big fish. And we had, uh, he's just absolutely the nicest person. And here I am, this nobody, and we had this like one joke prior to Gen Con about debating on the best type of pen. And I worked in a law, I worked in the copy center of a law firm. So. <laughs> and I was like, no, legitimately, I, I agree the G2 is great, but let me bring you a different pen. And I just handed him a pen at Gen Con and he knew exactly who I was in this huge thread of people like discussing pens. So it was just like, and he was genuinely nice and passing on information. And I just, I love that he kind of stays neutral on a lot of things, and he's just incredibly friendly it's like to people. a big bowl of Southern hospitality. Yes. You've never witnessed James in any, any form. He's doing a, a film, actually, right now, I believe. Um, he's just a really, really good guy. He's really nice. So yeah, he tends to be my inspiration, just because of his friendliness. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I like the guy. He lives in, in LA. That's where he lives now. I live in California, so it's kind of nice to see him cross paths with him. So for me, the, honestly, as Silly as it sounds, the reason I started doing content at all was probably not unlike a lot of people that want to start doing content was, boy, I'm already going to these cons, I am already meeting people, and, you know. Might as well. I, I, can, I can get games <laughs> for free, I can get in the con for free, and, boy, you did know. You realize that. And then the rabbit hole just opened up wide, because what, what I kind of tried to create I didn't really see anybody doing the same thing out there the way we were doing it. And I went from myself and another guy that happened to be a uh, brother from a fraternity of college at a different university, different years, everything else, to now we have you know, a, a gaggle of writers that really love doing this. And you know, it's pretty neat when I come back from a con and they call me Santa Josh, um, you know, because they, they see the work that we put into it. They see that, you know, these stupid green shirts that we walk out and everybody sees us. And they, they see all this and it, it's like, you know, I feel appreciated. It's like, wow, you know, when people came into my office as an attorney, they were never happy, <laughs> you know. That is not something people do. Um, and so, you know, it was kind of a why not moment in terms of inspiration. Um, you know, I, I've always been kind of a, a contrary personality when when people say I, I can't do something is when I really say, oh, no, 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 I, I, I don't agree with that. I, I can do it. And people told me when I first started doing the written word, nobody reads. They all want video. And I found a lot of publishers really wanted videos, but a lot of people read. And a lot of people read and they continue to read and they continue to soak up what we're putting out there. And the more publishers told me that nobody read, the more I had numbers to back them up to show them that they were wrong. And it was like, no, no, this is why you made this. This is something else. You have these videos. These videos are great. There's a lot of content put out there that's great. But there's other content. So I, I liked the idea that I was doing something different. And that felt like it validated that I was doing something outside of the law. Um, I guess as far as inspiration, um, like, you know, first, the most inspiring thing, if you are going to create media, 
uh, for whatever, it doesn't matter if it's board games or records or whatever. If you're gonna create media that people are gonna consume, the, the, the most inspiring media you'll ever get is feedback from your audience. Uh, it will be it'll be the people that like see you at a convention and walk up to you and say, hey, you know, thanks a lot, I really appreciate your videos, or you know, hey, I, I really like that review that you did on that game, you know, it, it really made me want to buy that, or, or whatever. You know, they'll, they'll say something and it'll be it'll be the thing that charges you up. For at least for me. I mean that's that's uh, I got an email from uh, like I remember when I first started doing my videos, they were like super, super long and I was the first person ever and I still do super long videos, but I was the only person that did long videos, and I went over all the rules, and now it's you know, pretty commonplace. Because when I started doing it, there was only like five or six people that did video reviews back then. And, um, but I had somebody contact me that, that, that basically they said that they were like disabled, and they, they weren't able to, like uh, because of what they had, they couldn't read rules. So they, they could only read for a certain amount of time, and they, they couldn't parse the rules anymore. And they really appreciated the fact that like I showed all the rules, so then like they'd be able to like play the game because I would teach them the game. And that was like and to this day, I like I, I cut that, I, I saved that email. I was like, ah, oh, like, because yeah, I made a, a difference to like that one person. Of, you know, it, it kind of made doing the videos like worth it to me. Um, but as far as like people that like like signature people that like have inspired me. Um, I, I mean, I have to say Scott Alton. Uh, I mean, I, I never thought I'd like become friends with the guy who runs Board Game Geek, but uh, I consider him a really, really good personal friend. I, I talk to him a lot, and uh, he has done, he personally has done more to promote, I mean, not just the website, but I mean, him himself, like, and it's all behind the scenes, supporting, uh, like, creation, and supporting uh, the, the hobby, so, you know, trying to promote everything, and, and he is, he is like like unilaterally like uh, the nicest guy in the world, and he is he's giving and he's generous and he's compassionate. And he, all he wants is like for like the board game hobby to just be elevated to the point of like uh, sheer excellence across the board. And if you ever get a chance to sit down and talk to him, he is like one of the most genuine kind people ever. And, and I never, without fail, if I'm having a bad day, I just reach out to him, and after ten minutes of the conversation, I feel better. So I mean, it's. Uh, uh, yeah, that guy is probably like the best person in the world. Wow, there's a lot of good names there. Um, so actually the previous panel was talking about people being interested in not only what we do, but how they can get involved in what we do. So we, we all do content to some extent. I mean, I was watching Vince's videos since way, way before I was doing, you know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Other than the fact that I'm still waiting for a new camera, yeah, I want, I, want, I want that 4K, man. That's what I want. But uh, I, it's just been really cool to see these people make all this great stuff. And uh, I, I'm actually curious, as much as pretty much most people here would be. Uh, for me, if you guys wanted, to, if you guys were a game creator and you did something that involved games in some way, and you wanted to get a hold of me, I'm pretty easy to reach. You can literally friend friend request me, and I'm I'm going to answer you back and forth, no problem. But I do have a website, and if you're interested, there's a big contact form that you can fill out and we do our live streams and we do our content for, for videos and walkthroughs and all that good stuff. It's very, very simple. And I think for most people it is, but I don't think a lot of people know how to go through it because I'm getting I get emails from people and they're like, where do I go to figure all this out? And like you, you can type in my website.com and, and they go filter to gamer.com and, and bam, that's how you get a hold of that. But what I actually think about when I look at other people's stuff, like how do you get a hold of members and stuff? And I don't actually know this. I had to actually go around and talk to people to figure out how to do it. And it seems simple, but I figure people want to know. So, um, you got anything you want to talk about for that? Not yet? No content? You said you want to do previews, though. Yeah. And how would you go about having people contact you? Would you what would be your preferred method? I think most people just contact me through Facebook. Like, it's like easier, personally. right? Yeah. It's, so, it's, it's so simple nowadays to just yeah. do that. I think like eight years ago, whatever. You know, yeah, I, I mean, I'll pretty much answer any message that comes through. I mean, if there's a reason to block you, I will. But <laughs> yeah, like if I get a notification that somebody who's not my friend messages me, I'll check it. Like I'm always active on Do you do the Facebook check where you click on the person and you scroll through at least the last 10 posts? Oh, yeah. Mm, all right, you're OK. You're right. I have, and I have a few uh, <laughs> friends that like if you're mutuals, then it's an auto because I know they do vetting. So I'm like, OK, well, they did my work already. So, but yeah, just if you send me a message on Facebook. You see some contact from me pretty soon then? Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Well, and my name is easy to find, like, yeah, so. 
All right. How would be? How would I go about getting uh, some I'm, written? Some I'm pretty words? easy. Josh D. Hale on Facebook is pretty easy. We also have overflow email on Meeple Gamers, so <clears throat> write anything at MeepleGamers.com and it'll eventually reach me. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and people, so if I was a creator, I would just say, I want, I want a, a, a review? Is that so, what I would so, ask so for? So for the written stuff, we actually have a process that we've had to instill on the basis that, you know, I, I do get a lot of people who say they want to write, and when I first was doing it, I was so excited to, you know, help people that I would send them games and I'd never see a review. And that's always a problem for every you know, oh, publisher yeah. out there. Yeah, and it's, it's, not, it's right. not right either. Like, right. You're expecting to make content, that's why you ask, exactly. especially if you ask too. So, so what I ended up doing is just instilling a policy that said, write two reviews on something you have available, and if you do that, I'll send you some stuff. And it's worked out real well, um, and by and large, you know, you probably see green shirts around at cons and they're hard hard not to see. So that's how we do it. I, unless there's there's a there's a really really bad garage metal band called the Undead Viking Mafia down in Florida, but so I have nothing to do with them. But if you Google Undead Viking, I'm, I'm who you'll find. I mean, and I I'm on the Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm I'm everywhere. I mean, I've never. I mean, that's one weird thing is, is that I wish I. Uh, I, I've always said, uh, maybe I should take this more seriously. I've always just like kind of flown by the seat of my pants when I do this stuff. I mean, I've never had a website. I've never, you know, I mean, I, I just signed up for Twitter and, and then I never used it for like two years. So you could just like Google your address and then send you the game and then you just pump one out? <laughs> well, no, I mean, the best, I mean, it's just like, yeah, I mean, if, if you email me an Undivided Videos, I mean, a, a Gmail, I mean, I, I'll get your email, but I mean, you know, I mean, uh, and I've been kind of out of the game a little bit. I mean, I still create content, and I still do my thing, but I haven't really been hardcore doing videos because I've been—I was working with, for Taste of Mr. Games uh, and developing games for the last three and a half years, and and now I'm I'm back to being footloose and fancy free. So I'm kind of excited to really dive right back in and, and really start creating content like I used to. Uh, it's, it was it was it was fun to be part of the industry. Trust me, it was fun to like uh, help create games and help them get creative be on the shelf and I could see those things and I like, I did a lot of work on that. That that game exists because of the work I did. But um, I'm excited about the new chapter. This is where I go. But I love TNG games. I really do. I'm not blowing smoke when I say it. I've, I've literally enjoyed every Well, I sent you enough of them. I know. I've gotten a lot of them. Oh, Crusaders. I could, I could talk at length about how much I enjoy TNG. Expansion 2044. Yes. I, I don't even work for them. I, 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 I still promote them anyway. <laughs> so that was pretty much what I had to ask you guys. I think the most of the basic concepts. Anything I forgot that you want to talk about before I open it up for people to ask what they like? Um, I mean, I guess my question is, I mean, I, I, if, if the big thing is, is that I've always, and sometimes I've, I've done these panels and people are like, how do I get started? How do I, uh, if I, I mean, I don't know if that's what this is, if you're here to find out like what it's like to create work or. So I was given the panel from somebody else who had that as a title. I changed the title of Gen Con. Instead of changing the title, they gave me an hour earlier. So they changed the time. What? So this is just, like, I don't know, I don't even know, well, but I'm happy. The, the biggest thing, and, 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 and you, know, you, you use this as a touch-off point, the biggest thing is is that uh, you have to do it because you, you love the idea of creating the content. If you, I, I've done panels where I've, I've seen people, it's like, oh, I, I really want to like make money doing this. And it's like, and that's great, you probably can. You probably can monetize it, and you probably can you know, earn income doing it. There's nothing wrong with that, but I mean, if you go into it looking at it like that, I think, those are people that like get burned out really quick, you know, because it's 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 a grind. It's tough. It's tough to like. It's it's one thing uh, when you sit down and play a game. Like I, I remember when I got to sit down and play a game and I got to enjoy it. And now when I sit down and play a game, in the back of my head I'm thinking, okay, how am I going to describe how how this game is played? Oh, I'll, I'll show a close up of that. Yeah, that's what I'll do. And like you know, and instead of enjoying the game for 90 minutes, I'm like already working through the camera angles. And you know, so it's it's it can be an extremely rewarding thing to do, but it, you have to realize that it, it, it is something you have to be passionate about, or else you will, you know, they, uh, you just people people start and they get really excited and they'll do tons of work. They'll write, they'll 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 do videos, they'll do reviews, and they'll they'll. But after six months, it'll it'll go away just because it's it's tough to. To, to stay focused. There's so many games coming out now. There's oh yeah, so yeah, that, that's the other thing too. You can't. It's like the cult of the new, and you can't even really help it these days because there's just so many. Even just on Kickstarter alone. On average, there are 60 new board games a week. 
It's some helpful Probably tip right ten there. Years <laughs> ago, ten years ago, you could walk through like the board game room at Gen Con and you'd know every game that was being played at every table. And now it's like I walk through a place with an open gaming area and I'm like, what, what is that? What, that looks really cool. How have I not heard about that? You know? It's crazy. It's really crazy how, how much it's exploded. But anyway, I'm done talking. No, I, I think that's a great jumping off point. I mean, I would agree as well. Like when I first started, it was like, what do I do? Do I, I got a website. Okay, that's right. And an Instagram and a Twitter and a Facebook and a Facebook page and a Facebook group. And so I'm learning all this stuff. And really it's all about being consistent. I think that's the most important thing, especially on YouTube, is you make sure if you can do a video a month, that's fine. You can do a video a week, you have to do a video a day, make sure you're consistent with it at the same time, and so people are aware. You build your audience and you grow from there. If you want to add on Twitter, make sure you post once a day or once a week or once a month. As long as you're consistent with that, people will respond to that, people will remember that. I do my live stream every Wednesday for the last two years, 7.30 p.m. PST. Every time it's on the same place, same day, and because of that, I built a decent following with my live stream. But I'm not so consistent with my YouTube channel, so I post things maybe once a day, maybe not once a day, and it, it shows. It shows constantly that it's like, oh, you're doing really well this week. Watch because I made a video every single day at 5:30. Oh, you're doing really poorly this week. You made three videos, and one was at 1 a.m. It's like, okay, well, that's 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 probably why. So hopefully that would be some advice. And that's for probably good advice for any content creator. Really, is being very consistent with your work. Yeah. Um, so that would be my startup advice. As well as being a cool dude, or yeah, being, being cool dude is chase a good idea as well. Be cool dude. Yeah. You have any, any starting points? I mean, it's cool because we have different perspectives on on the panel here. We got a writer and then somebody who works for in the industry as part of a, 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 a panel. And then, uh, sorry, a booth. And then we've got you. You're like the, the agent. I am. <laughs> <laughs> the wise elf. <laughs> So what would you give for, for people who are interested in doing the um, starting vlogging or maybe starting? I think the biggest thing is, is once you decide that you're going to do the convention <laughs> circuit and you're going to talk to publishers, is one, get a pair of comfortable shoes. Um, Good socks when you're camping? Another thing all the above. And, you know, it, by the end of the con, you know, when uh, Kevin first went with me, you know, we're deadlifting games, you know, to take home for review. And the first time he was doing that, he said, you know, Josh, I, I, I don't have proper convention muscles. Um, <laughs> and you, you're carrying dead weights. Well, and, and here's, here's the thing. Oh, you poor guy. You yeah. yeah. It's all sad. It's all sad. You got several hundred dollars worth of nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I think space uh, is the trick. Like, I don't know, people, you know, when I first went to Gen Con the last year, it's first time I actually went, and I realized I had too many games because I only had one suitcase. My wife is smart, and she packed a suitcase in a suitcase, and she took her suitcase out, and I had one suitcase to work with. And so I had a bunch of games, and it was like this much game, and then like this much suitcase, you know. So I had to cut it and cut and do all that and tape, and I had to go back home, and it took me hours to get it back to its not pristine shape. So now I say suitcases and suitcases, and also it's only 20 bucks to bring a suitcase back from, from here to wherever you are. I live, I live in California, so that's not, it's almost across the country. So when I came back extra from, suitcases. I came back from Kublai Khan and I got Western Legends there and it took up my entire small suitcase. I was like, well, I can like shove things around there. I got, I got, uh, yeah, the, the, the big one was the Gloomhaven, and that was insane. I, still I mean, I might be crazy, but I mean, most places have a FedEx or a UPS close. I've actually only seen one at Gen Con last year. I didn't see well, it. Well, but somebody said here at Gen Con, there's the Rico Business Center, and if you go there, the guy there, work, his name is Eric, and he, he packs up everything really nice, and he'll ship it on for just over us. The suitcases is cheap. Well, maybe, but then I then I don't have to worry about extra suitcases. And plus, I you've seen how they so. handle those suitcases. <laughs> they throw around. More of my games have gotten damaged in my luggage going home than I, you know, instead of like a thing with a bunch of packaging around. I, don't know, I, I agree. I so agree. you got to <laughs> wait three more days for your games. Oh. So I went to Essen last year and got games for all the riders, and I took seventy some games home in one big suitcase, and. Took Ziploc bags and just threw all the pieces of every game into a single just Ziploc bag. Just imagine squares and of the tore all the boxes. boxes. Right, I tore all the boxes, and then I got for me. Yeah, yeah, you're like out. torturing <laughs> people. This is not. A <laughs> you, you see the horrified <laughs> looks at the faces. <laughs> but, but this, this is going the wrong way, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but this has content. Dude, right. It's not. You're learning here. Yeah. It's truly 
not always pretty because it was either do that or not get them home. You know, because I, I didn't, you know, I didn't have any FedEx accounts in Germany. So, you know, I still have writers that complain about those boxes. Um, but the, the truth is, yeah, you can ship it, you can do whatever, but if you're going to do the content, get them home. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Make sure that the stuff you get here goes home to you. Right. Otherwise, you won't have that stuff. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to open it up to, if you guys have any questions for anybody here uh, about anything, you're welcome to ask us, and bam, that was a quick one. Go ahead. What's up? Hey, so I know that, uh, Jay, you talked about Facebook, and I know that a lot of your content's written, and I know that you don't even have a website. But mm -hmm. the question that, that I have for you is um, looking at the field and, and what it takes to be successful, whether you're a game reviewer or a game previewer or even a publisher or a designer, what are the social media platforms that you really need to have mastery in to find success? There's so much social media. I mean, I, some game companies or design companies even have MySpaces out there, which probably isn't with the time, right? So in, in your experience, what do you think are maybe like the top three or top five, whatever you think is gonna be the place that those people need to put their focus to find success and, and grow a crowd? I would say Instagram for content visually. Like it's a quick way to like, if you can take a good photo, you're gonna catch people's attention. Like everybody's taking photos of games, so make sure you're taking a quality photo, a good angle, something interesting, but it's a quick way to just like nab somebody. And you can build up an audience quickly with hashtags on Instagram. I am really bad at Twitter, but from what I understand, Twitter is a really like good way to get news in board games. Yeah, I barely use it. I'm really bad at it, but I tr I've been dabbling more frequently. Um, and then for net the networking side, of it, I think Facebook's more valuable for within the industry and. So it just depends on what you're looking to do. Also, like I've been really considering looking into Twitch because from what I understand, that's kind of becoming a little more relevant than even YouTube for video content. Could be, I, I, from what I understand, Twitch is like only on for so long and then it goes into like an archive and you can transfer it to YouTube, but if you're gonna live stream. I think I'm the only person here has actually used Twitch, Maybe, the OBS yeah. and all that. Um, I don't know, a lot of Twitch streamers, also the BGG, I think BGG does Twitch for like Origins previews and Gen Con previews, I think that they do that. You probably would know more than I would. Um, but people have been like, oh, it's so hard to get people transferred from my one place to yeah. Twitch, and there's not a huge amount of people on Twitch to build a community up. So it's like, it's the best place for streaming, yeah. but it's hard to get your community from one space to another, unless you're literally building it from there, which I don't know any examples of people who who do that. I agree with you completely on Instagram, though. Yeah. Uh, that is where all the youth is going to be. I don't think they're going to be interested in Facebook anymore. And I don't, and I think Twitter is going to be less as well. Instagram has been, like, everybody I know who's very young has an Instagram. They use it, and it's a really big thing. That's why, that's my, my daughter's launching. And basically, she has Unicorn Meatball on Instagram. And it just automatically shares over to Facebook for anybody following there. It's like Kickstarter, right? Like Kickstarter, you see a bunch of images, and that's what's that's the first thing you want to see is images. What does the game look like? And I think on Instagram, it's similar. Yeah. That's why I think you're completely right when it comes to that. One of the things we've been focusing on, one of the companies I work with, is specifically getting people to try to follow them on Kickstarter, um, because the the relevancy of everything that happens on Kickstarter when somebody follows, you see what things they back, you see what things they're interested in. You see what things they're doing, and for the business side of things, that's that's a great amount of information. It's a great way to advertise is by people that are already following you. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. If you have so, for instance, on Kickstarter, I'm following a lot of people. Most of my stuff is for Kickstarter, so I've got hundreds. Right? Tuesday, your email. When I see something like dwellings pop up, I see literally a hundred messages saying this person is back dwellings, right. and when that happens, it go you go. Maybe I should back it. So getting exactly. people to do that is is really good marketing, I think. I, and it's also like your best friend just backed it, plus ninety other people. So it's a lot of work getting those those follows on Kickstarter, but that's well worth the time. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> any, like any 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 any. Uh, I mean, I just I I mean, I'm the worst to ask that question. Because, uh, I any anybody who follows me anywhere is I've never. I've never tried to get them. I mean, that sounds, that sounds so d um, uh, 
I no, think I mean, when you're a like, trailblazer, though, like well, you, you have started, that. Yeah, you were one of the first starting people. Yeah, so I mean, like I've said repeatedly that if I didn't, if I hadn't started doing videos and I did, I'd have like seven people to watch. But uh, luckily enough, I was like one of I was like one of five fish in the sea at that time. So, I mean, I, I I never put really any effort. I just I just said I want to make a video about this and I did it. And then if people like it, great. If they didn't, oh well. And I and I I've had that attitude. Sadly, uh, you know, and, and also really awesomely about everything I've done, and, and just for whatever reason, the and, and I guess and this is going to sound like whatever you can take this like well, but I've always said that the day that I decide to stop making content for board games, and I say I'm done doing videos, I'm not going to do this anymore, and I don't think that's ever going to happen. But if I do, I, I I told myself I want to know that like from the moment I started doing it and the moment I stopped. It was all me. It's like it's like the one thing in my life that I that I started myself. I fell into it basically out of luck, and I created it myself. I didn't have anybody help me. It's the one thing that's just completely me. And 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 I am. It's like other than my children, it's like the one thing I am unabashedly proud of. And and if, and if people like it, great. If they don't, I always say there is. Literally thousands of other people you can watch. Uh, you know that, that's cool. Go we'll find somebody else that, 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 that makes the stuff that you want. It makes a very stress-free environment for yourself, which is that's good. Any more questions? Yes. I have maybe an odd question. So I run a YouTube channel and we do board game reviews. I've started having some smaller Kickstarters and like projects reach out and say, "Hey, we want you to talk about this stuff, but when I ask about, can we get a preview?" They are like, well, we've sent out all of our preview copies. So, what would you say for balance between like establishing relationships and stuff like that versus like, well, I don't want to talk about something that I have I've never played. Can I say something? No, go ahead. Um, I, I have no idea what, what your channel is or anything like that. I, I just I'm going to say this right now, and I've told everybody this. Uh, um, you should tell them, it's like, well, if, if, how am I going to do a video? Why, why would I talk? I, I thought without playing your game, without, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. Just say, and, and, I, and, and this is up to you, but you should be paid for your time. And I, and I tell this to anybody who creates, I mean, if you're just creating a video for fun or whatever, but like with, 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 especially with Kickstarter previews, and I said this repeatedly, it's like you wouldn't have, if your boss called you up and said, I need you to come to work and work for free so I can make more money, you'd say, Go jump in the lake, and and so like if somebody ever contacts you and says, I, I I really like you to like put put a bunch of work and effort into making a video for me so I can make money, and I don't want to pay you anything, then I would you would be like, eh, but, but for, you know so figure out what, even if it's like fifty bucks, you know just say yeah this is yeah you know, I I mean, I'd love to I'd love to I'd love to dive into this and I'd love to I'd love to try to make your dream come true, but you need to like just give me something for my time, you know and and it's just. And I, I, how would I, I don't mean yes. I suppose if you just said, I, you know, oh hey, this game's on Kickstarter right now. Go and check it out. I mean, I guess that would help. I mean, I, I would think that why wouldn't they want to have somebody like actually like, hey, here's what the game looks like, and this is how it's played. I mean, that would be like way more helpful than just like a simple little blurb. But I mean, you got to figure out what's 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 how 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 do you value your own time, and then and then be consistent with it, and and like because if you don't. Value your own effort, your own time, and uh, to a level, uh, then you're not going to have uh, like the industry respect your value and, and value your time and your reach. I do know another reviewer who does video content that he's involved in like a reviewer chain. So when you get those can ups, you know upstarting Kickstarter companies who don't have a lot to put into pre preview copies, they will. Prepaid, they'll put like a prepaid envelope in there for you to ship it to the next one oh. when you're done. Uh, so that's what he'll do is he'll he'll receive it from either the publisher or designer uh, or the previous previewer or reviewer, and then they'll ship it on to that. Like person. a round robin. Yeah. yeah. So that you, you know you they definitely want to because it is if you're if, if that's kind of where I started is helping a friend who he ended up only having two review copies because it was, it's so expensive to do singular copies. You know, something that if you did mass produ if mass production, it's like $12 a game. He paid $80 a piece for his two copies to have finalized copies. So if you can even create, a, you know, a chain of other reviewers, previewers that you, you know, trust and enjoy like working with, that maybe you can 
pass it on. Or even suggest it to them. Yeah, you have to have the product to review the game. Yeah, I don't. I, I mean, I've heard that trap before, too, where somebody's like, I've got this really cool mystery box game, and I want you to just talk about it. Just look at the Kickstarter page and, and tell me what you think about it. And I'm like, I think it's it's got a lot, a lot of pretty pictures, but I don't know if the game's any good or not. It could be crap for all. How about when he asked you a print and play? Could you please print out no. all the files no. and put no. the game together? And, and that's, yeah. that's happened hundreds of times. Yeah. I'm like, look, I don't. I, I wish I could. So I really, I want to help the smaller. And I understand it's expensive to make yeah. prototypes. It's hundreds of dollars to make a prototype that might just be yeah, like some cardboard and whatnot. You know. Yeah. So I get that, but you have to realize that I also have literally 50 games stacked up in my house. My wife hates me because of it, but loves me still because I still have it there. Yeah. But it's it's too insane. I, I don't even have a printer that can do that. I have a 3D printer. I was like, I'm gonna make 3D prints for people when they need it, little miniatures. Somebody was like, I need 50 miniatures. No, that's gonna take you literally. A <laughs> so please send me the game. Nice try. I definitely nice try to be a premium. Yeah. Nice <laughs> yeah. Thank you for joining us. Thank yeah, you for joining us. Hi, my name is Jeremy. I may be known as Jumble Plays Games. You may just see, hey, I'm diversity. That's okay. All right, there you go. Right. Yeah. There you go. So you do live streams, right? That's how so I, I also do. Yeah, I also do live streams on Facebook. Uh, I do stuff for solo, uh, solo games primarily. I used to do a whole bunch of products at once. Yeah, it was like an infomercial. I was like kind of an infomercial guy for board games. And I also do stuff for my son called Dad. Right. So um, I do a wide range of content, and that's kind of how I started. I threw a lot of content out there and it wasn't a lot of quality and you know I sucked at it. Everybody starts off. And I, and I tell people just suck at it. Just do it. Like do it, get better at it, learn from it, take feedback, ask for feedback, you know take as many L's as possible but be passionate about what you're doing. Like do you care? Like what, what's the move as I always tell people? What's the move? How do I get started as a reviewer? Well then what's the move? Why do you even care? Why do you even care? You can just play the games and tell people about them. But why do you care? Like, why do you care to sit in front of a camera for another two, three hours, messing up rules that you know? Let's say you review your favorite game, you still gotta look at a rule book, and then you gotta explain it, but then you gotta make it look good. Or even if you're writing, like, how do you make somebody read what you're writing? If you're trying to write a thousand words, and you're like, but I wouldn't even read a thousand words. Okay, so all those things you have to consider, man, and it's just a road, it's a long road, and I, honestly, I'm thankful that I'm even here two years ago, well, at Gen Con 50. I'm thankful that you're here too. Yeah. I can't. Here. <laughs> One time. Oh, you won't. Know. Oh. <laughs> Shots fired. Shots fired. But I actually came to Gen Con straight up, 50, uh, Gen Con 50. And I came here the day before Gen Con. I said, I'm going to be a reviewer. I literally, that's exactly what I did. I'm not kidding you. That was my first Gen Con. Yeah. I just said, I just said I'm going to be a reviewer. I just went all in, drove down here, and I just did it. And that passion project is still a passion project to this day. And I keep working hard and you know people recognize that and I just keep putting it out and I keep getting better. I keep getting better. My last my live stream last night went to hell and I didn't know what to do, but I bought three new cameras and I was excited about it. You know, now I have three camera angles in my live stream. I was very excited. And it crashed. And I didn't know it crashed for a half an hour. And then it came back. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna keep playing. And I did it. And like it just it didn't matter. It did not matter to me. It just the people who love you, they will grow to love you. You'll have one fan, then you'll have ten fans. And that's all that even matters, actually, right? That's all that matters. Somebody's like, man, I really like your content. Then you get your first email, I love your content. Then you get your first PM and somebody says, man, I really like what you do. You're really passionate about what you do. And you're looking at your account and you're like, man, somebody who read, like, they only got 30 views on that. Well, that one person, that one person out of those 30 people decided in the entire world of the internet to reach you. To find you, find your email, your terrible contact page, email, the, the email that you don't use anymore that you thought was cool that you started the web page with. You know, like mine was like probably like chocolate drop. <laughs> you know, you know whatever, whatever. But like, yeah, they found you and they, they wrote you something. And that's really great, man. I mean, that's what you're really here for. Hopefully, you have passion for what you're doing, you know, years later. So any more, we're getting to the end here, but I want to open up for any other questions for any of these people here. Any new people to the panel and or from other people? I wasn't able to get uh, the contact information for the two panels on the left. Uh, my name, uh, oh, this not contact, like how I find your content. Oh, so it's, it's just Jumbo Lab Plays Games. Um, you can also look it up, well, Jumbo Lab Plays Games. Facebook? Exactly. Yes, so you can also just look me up. Put Jumbo Out Plays Games or just put Jeremy Howard because I actually use it through my personal account. 
um, because I just want to make as many people be able to see my content as possible. Um, I do have a YouTube page, but I only use it really for previews and con coverage like this. And uh, the reason why I say that is because most people just know who I am from Facebook. Like I literally, literally I literally him, post videos just pop constantly, right like constantly. So if you're at a convention, you'll just see me going live all the time, or I'll interview people that people ask me to interview. Um, so I try to make sure that I'm a person of the people. That's why I say, "Hey, party people, how y'all doing?" That's it. That's you're invited to the party anytime. Mine is is set up. It's the what's upcoming is going to be called Nerdy Mama Media. It's on Facebook and Instagram. Or again, my personal Facebook is Jade, and the last name is D U G U A Y. Any other questions before we wrap it up? And if you have a question regarding... No, you know what? Because I, I can talk all day. But I, I can't talk all day. I'm an only child. All right? <laughs> so if anybody wants to listen, I'm like, whoa! All right. But anyway, I just want to say this for people who are starting out. Like, and I, I said about the grind before, but like, when you ask for things, I always tell people, I always say, like, how do you get review? How do you get review copies? You got to put out content. You just have to put out content. You have to... It's a proof of concept. Like, what do you look like? What do you sound like? When do you deliver? How often do you deliver? Um, they need to know that. And they also need to know, like, I mean, especially when you meet someone like Lance, like, I met him, like, you know, like, why does he care? Like, what is he, what is he? Who is this dude? You know, like, who is he? And I think, oh, I know, man. <laughs> you want to be a big timer now? Huh? <laughs> All right, we got to talk after <laughs> It's almost six, though. All right. But yeah, I just, I just want people to know, you got to get out there. And you also, like that Kickstarter preview thing, when I got into that, one of the biggest things was is offering, like to, to pass things along. Um, I even, this is crazy, I actually, bef even before that sometimes, at some point, I would just take the preview copies and like cover them anyway. Like get me passed. Because people, the thing is, is that people like to see that you're covering these games. They're like... I was covering stuff like right, right before it ended, like right before the Kickstarter ended, or in the pledge manager, like whatever it was. Like at some point, nobody cares about the prototypes, but pledge manager, pledge manager time. Who? Wait, hey, did you play this game? Well, most of them. Mike has played. He's played it like a month and a half ago. He barely remembers what the game is. But sometimes I had to come in at the end and just kill it in the last 48 and just try to figure it out and get a little traction and people see that. You know, like gotta have content out there. How much of your time is actually in content creation versus marketing that content? Because I'm assuming even though you have a love of the game, it's about revenue. Uh -oh. some We're going over time. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of chase. No, no. You're talking about on content, accident, and video stuff. Eight hours a day, twelve hours a day, including online. How long does it take you to market that twelve hours of content? Whether it's good or bad, right? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. I, 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 maybe someday I'll, I'll know, but I mean, yeah, I, I have no idea. It, for me, it depends on the content, right? Is it an Instagram post? Well, the marketing is fairly simple. Oh, yeah. I push the button and set it off, right? Most people know that, so. Right. But YouTube, on the other hand, right? How many times do you want to share something? When do you want to share it? In, in, in my uh, experience, which is limited to most of these people, actually, that is. First, first 48 for Kickstarter, which is the most important, and then the last 48, which is very important. And then throughout, if you're, depending on if you're being a sponsor or not, I mean, it depends. If, if I'm just giving a game to review and I just, I review it, I'm not asked to like, you know, promote it and all that. I usually will share it twice, once the once at the end. But really, for me, I think the most time comes into editing video. Like, I spend 10% of the time playing, playing games, and then 85 editing, and then the rest, yeah. of, the rest is marketing and emails editing. and all that. Uh. So, but I think it, it can be different for you. Mine's software based, so um, when it's all said and done, I press a button too. But I've got about ten softwares that run at the same time that took time to set up. But now it's kind of like a, a lands answer. I don't really know how much time it takes to program. Well, I mean, marketing yeah, is also involved in making photos, yeah, making photos for your <laughs> yeah. stuff, and that can take quite a while, especially if you have some artistic yeah. talent. I know your blogs probably have some kind of type of photo that has to be. Yeah, we do a lot of photos, um, but. A lot of times I, I instruct our writers to try to think about the photos while they're playing it, and if they catch a good moment, mm -hmm. take the photo then. Yeah. Don't try to do it later. Yep. 
you know, just do it in the moment because, frankly, it's going to be a better picture anyways when it's in the moment, um, rather than trying to recreate that moment later. Um, one of the silliest things on blog sort of stuff is some of the best pictures that we have are when a hand is in the game. It sounds like such a silly little thing, but having a hand on the table in the game makes the picture better. I don't know why, but we get more likes on hand in pictures than anything Ask else. Ask an artist, maybe? A painter? I, I'm not that guy. I just take pictures of hands. <laughs> Marketing for live streams is also way more complex. I, mean, yeah. I could go into a lot of explanation for marketing a live streams me, and then Jeremy would be doing a lot of live streams. Man, you sharing this, like this this <laughs> this guy is being understated right now. My God, you do as much. My God, just do them, just do them, no. my God. We both. Right, like, but, no, so, I'm not kidding. This guy, I'm sorry. That's not true. This guy right here, I don't know what he does. He's got magic. But I'll tell you why. His streams are a party. They are a party. It's you are invited to the party. And there, it, it takes a while to get there. You know, it's like when you see somebody's project, that's a, that's a really great concept of like, I will probably never get the views that he would and the consistent audience that he gets that sit in there all night long, what, for four, four hours or so? And you come back on there, and you come back on there at 11 o'clock at night on a school night and there's still 30, 40 people in there. It's bizarre. And the comments, and the comments are still moving. You know, and meanwhile, I'm sitting here, I, I'm watching too, him too, and I'm editing, and I'm like, oh, what are you doing in here? You know, like, he, he has a, he's earned that. You know, he's earned that. And then, like, I have a niche niche of being a solo person and playing with my son. Well, that's attractive to some people, but it's a niche. And I can't go in with it and say, hey, I want 50 people to watch my stream. Like, I want to be better than him. You know, I don't, I just want to put something out there. Like I said, you have to be passionate about it and care about it and not just think of it like, I need to beat the next person or be as good as that person or even question why he does so well. I, he did the work. I assume he did the work. Uh, to maybe, piggy, to yeah. piggyback on what Jeremy said, he just made me think of something. Somebody once told me, and I forget, it was a podcast, I was on his podcast, and he actually said, um, if you're gonna do it, if you're gonna like make content, comparison is the thief of joy. And that is, that is across the board. If you are making stuff and you want to say, why don't I have the same number of subscribers or the same number of views as that other person, you will, you will, the fun is gone. You will, you will, you will drive yourself crazy. Just comparison is the thief of joy, and it is, it is just like if, it'll take all the fun out of what you're doing. Just if you got, if you get 500 views, those are 500 views of people that came to see you. Don't care if somebody else got a thousand. So just to add one last thing to the idea of marketing, something I recently read, which I thought was really important, uh, somebody pointed out that <coughs> if you put in the work and build up the relationships with people and network enough, at some point, you no longer have to share your content. They'll share Other it people will share it for you. Exactly what about the yeah, <laughs> but for me, because I'm not doing like, I share other people's content more, and I spend so much time, I actually have an alarm on my Facebook, on my phone that says, hey, you hit three hours today. And I'm always proud of myself when I'm like, it's 10.30 at night, I didn't get it we're, in the afternoon. We're a group, <laughs> we're, we're a group, we're a big group, we're a circle of people. We have drinks after work, yes, we have drinks with publishers, like, we're all in the industry together. Yeah. There's so, no, like, beating people, there's not. You know, yeah. like, you love games, they love games, we all love Okay, there's some yeah. people that want to be They do, there they is. do. There but is. I'm just saying, but like, they, yeah. it, and if that's the way they look at it, I'm like, fine, that's, you, you know, you got a head start. You know, like, that's how I see it. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not thinking about that. So, so yeah. I'm the throwback to my last bit of marketing, so that was live streams, which I wanted to discuss this. Sharing is very, very important on Facebook. Sharing. And how I gather marketing is I have, obviously there's somebody at the camera, there's somebody at the computer, and the person at the computer is into all the groups and sharing all the groups, right? And we're a thumbnail. And then we have people on the stream. And the way I, the secret to my live stream yeah. streams, which you're not going to believe it, is it's a party. That's yeah, the first it's a party. That's the most important. Because if it's boring, anybody can play a game on, on a live stream. You guys can play a game. Why the hell would you want to watch me play a game on a live stream? Because it's fun. Yeah. It's engaging. It's a game you've never seen before. And not only that, but we do giveaways on stream live every Wednesday. And so people are like, I want to win that game. And we have publishers that come by and they'll show us the game. And people like giveaways. Yeah. So it's a surprise, right? Yeah. But, well, I'm like, hey, you share this out, we'll throw your name in the hat, 
and then the end of the street, you pull a name out, and you might win the game just by pushing a button, right? Bam, marketing from 70 different people sharing 70 different accounts, which could have upwards of, what, 100 people to 4,000 people. And so, that, it, it's a lot, it's more marketing strategy, so it doesn't take a lot of time, but it takes a lot of, like, setup and, and gathering the groups and whatnot, like asking permission from all the groups to post in certain things. Yeah. That's a whole other ball game. Right? Share, 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 so it share. It really depends. I mean, some things is just a share. click, like, and then YouTube, it's a little more than Facebook. It's, it's pretty insane if you really want to get into marketing stuff. But, yeah, I, I, I like, drill in my head, like, how do I get better? I always want to get better. And sometimes it's a lot of stress, um, but I always want to improve upon what I'm doing and make sure that people want to see the content. And if I see that people aren't, it tears me down. I shouldn't look at it that way. Like, really, a lot of the people on this panel are giving me a lot of advice, too. I, 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 like, I like your suggestions. Just, like, make it, and if people like it, you know, it, it's a lot easier. And it stresses down, and then you start making better content, too, because you're happier with what you do. But anyway, thank you guys so much. If you guys have any questions uh, for some of us, I know some of us have to leave. We've already actually stayed over three minutes, which is what the last group did. So now I'm going to apologize to the guy who's coming into the store. Blame them. Oh. Yeah, but we're going to blame them. So it's a terrible thought of mine. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, of course,